So you're planning to go outside and enjoy yourself? Well, as a survival instructor, there's a few things I can tell you that's gonna keep you very safe. You decide that you're gonna go on an outdoor adventure and it's quite obvious that right away you're going to start packing up some gear, but it's also important while packing up that gear that we think about the outliers. We think about how cold can the temperature actually get or how hot can the temperature actually get? What if we go on a new trail and that trail is a lot longer than we expected and we have to stay out another night? Do we have the few extra items in our kit to keep ourselves safe? So once we have all of our equipment packed up, now is the most important phase of pre-planning and that is letting someone know where we're going. Let that individual know where you're going, how long you're gonna be gone, when you're going to return, and what to do if you don't return. I think it's really important for all of us to identify that person who number one, we're comfortable with telling this, but we also need to realize that that person is doing us a favor by taking on this responsibility. It's not fair to them to leave everything in their hands if something does happen. Make sure you give them a good, clear outline of who to call and when to call them if you don't return. Now that our gear's packed, we thought about our outliers and we told someone where we're going and when we're gonna be back, it's time to get out of here. When recreating in the outdoors, there's always a possibility that an unfavorable situation can occur. Now, these situations can vary drastically. Everything from getting stuck in a storm and needing to just shelter up for a while, to misjudging how long it's going to take to hike a trail, to being absolutely, totally lost in an area that you don't know how to get out of and you don't know when rescue is coming. What we need to remember, though, is that in each one of those scenarios, the same basic rules apply of keeping ourselves safe. Now, before I list the survival priorities, it's important to understand that none of these priorities are more important than the next. It's going to be situational dependent. So it's important for you as an outdoorsman to understand the four priorities and use them accordingly in your situation. So the four survival priorities are fire, shelter, water, and food. No matter what situation you find yourself in, those survival priorities are what is going to keep you safe and keep you alive. I mean, really think about it. We still use those survival priorities in our everyday lives. We have a house as shelter, we drink water or some type of fluid we need to eat, and then we also need to control our body's core temperature. Now let's talk a little bit more closely about every one of those survival priorities. Fire is a true lifeline in the outdoors. It not only provides warmth, but allows us to dry out our clothing, cook our food, purify our water, and signal for rescue. I think it's really important that you always keep some type of fire starting devices inside your kit for these emergency situations. Our shelter needs to be looked at as our home away from home. So while we're out here in an outdoor setting, setting up a shelter is going to be our home. It's going to do a few things for us. First, our shelter is going to provide us protection from the weather, wind, rain, sleet and snow are all environmental factors that can drastically diminish your well-being while outdoors. It's also important to have a shelter that is of bright color. That's going to help affect rescue if you are in a situation that you're lost. And lastly, having that shelter set up with a fire in front of it is going to help radiate heat into that shelter, again, warming you up. At this point now, we're using two of our survival priorities compounded to make our life that much better out here. Water is so important. Hydration plays such a major factor in our mental and physical performance. Without water, dehydration sets in very quickly. So as a rule of thumb, I like to tell individuals to always drink a lot of fluids within the first 24 hours of any emergency type situation. The longer that you put that off, the more mentally fatigued you feel and the more that your body begins to struggle with its natural functions. There's a ton of different ways to purify water, but the easiest thing to do is swap out one of your canteens or water bottles with a metal bottle. This is gonna allow you to be able to place that metal bottle with any type of water you find into a fire and boil it in order to purify it. Also, being able to have warm water in a cold environment is going to allow you to put warm fluids inside you, hence warming you up and keeping you more comfortable in this situation. Now, everyone loves a good meal, but what we need to wrap our head around is that in an emergency type situation, food is not going to be readily available. So it's important that we understand we may not eat for a few days and that's okay. I always advise people to not worry about that as much as the other survival priorities for the simple fact we can go a lot longer without any food in our system than we can without 
fire, water, or shelter. But to be on the safe side, you can throw some protein bars in your kit or some trail foods that you enjoy just for that emergency type scenario. But if you don't have them, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. Honestly though, securing food in any wilderness environment is very difficult. It requires a very specialized skill set, a skill set that many people just don't possess. So if you can secure something, all the better, but I wouldn't stress over it. If everything else is in place, then you should be home eating a cheeseburger and drinking a beer in only a few days. So there are a few priorities for everybody to keep in mind when you're gonna recreate in the outdoors. Remember those priorities can shift depending on the situation that you're in. You might need water where I might need shelter sooner than later. But at the end of the day, all of those priorities will come into play the longer you're outside. So keep it in mind, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So this was Yuko Ambassador Dan Wowak. Check out www.yukogear.com for all that cool stuff. And until next video, stay lit.